In this second video on substitution, we're just going to be running through a few more examples so that you can see a wider variety of indefinite integrals. The goal when we're using substitution is to take the complicated integral that's in terms of x or t or whatever variable and put it into a very simple integral in terms of u. And then we find the antiderivative and put the result back into terms of the original variable. So our basic method is to first figure out what our u is going to be. So the u is always what your inside function was. And the typical choices for u are first whatever's inside the parentheses that's being raised to some power, or maybe it's what's in the exponent, or finally what's in the denominator. Those are the three things that tend to come up. Once we figure out what our u is going to be, we identify du dx. So we figure out what du dx is. And we need to do this because we need to figure out, okay, if we're taking the antiderivative of something, we have to figure out what part is our inside function and what part is the derivative of the inside. Once we find du dx, we solve for dx. Then we put the integral in terms of u. And here, the original variable must cancel out. So we need to have no x's or t's or whatever the original variable was. Once we do that, we find the antiderivative and then substitute back in terms of the original variable. Here's our first example. We have 4x and then we have x squared minus 5 raised to the ninth power. And if I think back to my choices for u, my guess is that I'm going to let u be the stuff inside the parentheses that's being raised to the power. So u is going to be x squared minus 5. Step 2, we're going to find du dx. And in this case, our du dx is going to be the derivative of x squared minus 5, so that's 2x. Solve for dx, we get du is 2x dx. So all I did was I multiplied both sides by dx divide by the 2x and I get du over 2x is my dx. Now I'm going to take my integral and I'm going to start substituting. So I have 4x, this x squared minus 5, that's my u, that's raised to the ninth power, and then my dx, I'm going to put this thing in there. So I'm going to have du over 2x. Now we want all of our original variable to cancel, so this needs to be only have the variable u in it. And if you notice here, I can cancel this 2x with this 4x, and that leaves me a factor of 2. So my integral, my antiderivative, now looks like 2u to the ninth du. Now I'm ready to do step 5. That's the antiderivative, so I have 2 u to the 10th over 10 plus c. Cancel factors of 2, and I have u to the 10th over 5, and then finally substitute back in terms of x. I have x squared minus 5 to the 10th power over 5 plus c. Take a moment and check. Check to make sure that we end up with what we originally started with. And if you do the power rule and multiply by the derivative of the inside you do, and then simplify a little, you do get what we started with. Let's look at a second example. This one looks pretty different. Notice I've got a numerator, I've got a denominator. I don't have anything that's raised to a power, so my choice for u for last time doesn't really apply. I don't have any exponential function, so I don't have any x's in the exponent, so my only obvious choice is going to be our u is our denominator. So what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video and see if you can finish this problem up. Welcome back. So here we've already chose u was our denominator. Taking the derivative of the denominator we have 3x squared minus 1. Solve for dx. First we multiply both sides by dx and I get du equals 3x squared minus 1 dx and then divide by the 3x squared minus 1. Next, 
I put the integral in terms of u. When I first put it in terms of u, I didn't see a direct way to cancel this 3x squared minus 1 right off the bat, but I noticed that I could factor this numerator. So that factors as 3 times 3x squared minus 1, and now my 3x squared minus 1 will cancel, and I end up with 3 times 1 over u du. This is a simple integral. So I've put my integral totally in terms of u. I no longer have any x's. Now I'm ready to do the antiderivative. Antiderivative of 3 times 1 over u du is 3 natural log of absolute value of u plus c, and then put it back in terms of x. The last thing you want to do is to check, so I will let you guys do that on your own. This next example, this one looks pretty simple. I just have e to the 2.1t. So if I think about what I need to use for my u, the only real choice I have here is 2.1t. Come up with the du dt and solve for dt. So do steps 1, 2, and 3, and then check back. So here I have my steps 1, 2, and 3. I'm now ready to start doing my antiderivative. So see if you can finish this one up. Hopefully you got e to the u du over 2.1, antiderivative of that. So I took this 2.1 in the denominator here and I wrote it as a fraction there. Take the antiderivative of e to the u and I get e to the u plus c. I want to rewrite this fraction here because in general I don't want to have any negative numbers in the denominator, I don't want to have any fractions in the denominator, and I don't want to have any decimals in the denominator. So one easy way to do that is to take 1 over 2.1 and I want to make this denominator be a whole number so I need to multiply by 10. So I get 10 over 21. And then if I could reduce this I would want to go ahead and do that. So I have 10 over 21, e to the 2.1t plus c if I back substitute. And then the last thing you would do is just check. Our last example for this video, we have 12x squared over 2x cubed minus 3 raised to the 0.3 power. So the first thing I might do is rewrite. The first thing I might do is rewrite this. Because remember when I had powers of x in the denominator, it was easier for me to use the power rule if I rewrote those so that they had powers of x that were negative, but it was in the numerator. I want you to pause the video and do steps 1, 2, and 3, and then play and check to see if you, you are, have it started correctly. So did you get step 1, 2, and 3 done correctly? Great. Now see if you can do steps 4, 5, and 6. You're back, so let's do step four together. So we're going to put the integral in terms of u. So 12x squared is right here. This is u, so I have u to the negative 0.3. And then my dx, I substituted that in right here. I can cancel the 6x squared, and I have a factor of 2 left. I have that my u to the negative 0.3 du. Now I'm ready to do step 5, actually do the antiderivative. So I have 2u to the 0.7 divided by 0.7 plus c. And then I went ahead over here and simplified that fraction because I don't want to leave decimals in the denominator. So I can multiply by 10 to make this denominator be a whole number, and I end up with 27 ths So I have 27 ths times 2x cubed minus 3 to the 0.7 power plus c. And then to check, all you would need to do is take the derivative. Here's my derivative, and it does check. There will be one more video on substitution, and it'll be a special one for what we do when our x's don't end up canceling.